Good to see you in the house of God this morning. Hopefully others will be coming in. And uh, it's just so good to have Brother Mohica here this morning. And uh, I'm going to let him come and he's going to give us a little testimony this morning. And I know he's been all over the place. So come on, Brother Mohica. Give him another hand. God bless you all. I'm glad to be back home. My house and my other house over here. <laughs> uh, I asked uh, Pastor Luke to give me a few minutes to give a testimony. Uh, March, the, last, the uh, middle of March last year, I developed a pain. It went down to my shoulder all the way down to my wrist. I mean, there was something I couldn't take it. And I'm strong with pain, because I've been in pain all, practically all my life. But uh, this was too much. I went to uh, a couple of chiropractors. My son-in-law took me. I went to urgent care. They said they cannot do anything for me. The pain was so much. Finally, I decided to go to the VA hospital because I'm a veteran, 24 years in the Army. And I went to the, to the emergency room. My son had to stay in the car. And finally, when they saw me, they took some x-rays. And the doctor told me I don't look good. He said, my, my, my back and my, bang, my, my back on my neck is no good. He said, I cannot give you an MRI because you have a pacemaker. I said, no wonder the Lord saved me. <laughs> and she gave me a CT scan. And when they put me in that tube, I could not bend my neck, you know, to, so they can take care of the image. And, and then I, I had to, you know, bite my tongue and my lips and everything so they can take the, the, you know, the CT scan. Result? The doctor told me, you don't look good. Your arthritis has gone all the way down to, your, to the top of your spine, your neck, and there's nothing we can do. We can give you medication for pain and some cream for the pain, but there's nothing we can do. And I said, okay. And, uh, and, and there was, uh, there was at, the, uh, at the beginning of uh, May, my sister came in from Miami to celebrate her every birthday uh, with, uh, with her grandkids. And, and uh, she knew I was in pain, you know. I had to stay 4 o'clock, 4.30 in the morning watching TV because of my recliner is a certain position that I was the only way that I can not have no pain. So, can you imagine every day I had to stay over there watching TV until I'd be drug enough to sleep so I'd be able to get a couple of hours of sleep. It was bad. It, I mean, really bad. So, we went to my church and, and uh, I started to sit on the bed because I cannot look forward. And I, cl uh, I asked the Lord, Please, I close my eyes. Say, Please, Lord, allow me to enjoy the, the gospel music. Allow me to enjoy the message. Take this pain away. And when I open my eyes, brothers and sisters, to this day, the pain is gone. <laughs> gone. I can move my neck, go anywhere. I can continue traveling, you know. Only the Lord can do that. Yes. But you have to have faith. Right. If you don't have faith, it's no work. Right. You know, it's just like in talking to the wind. The words just go out. But you have to have faith. You have to have faith in the Lord. And that's what I did. And I closed my eyes. A very short. Allow me. Yes. 
to enjoy the gospel music. Allow me to enjoy the message. Take this pain away. And that was his talk. Amen. Our God is real, and our God is still a healing God. Yeah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes, preaching, preaching the Word of God. Yes, he does. And, and how young are you, Brother Mohica? Only 82. Only 82. So, tell me God's not merciful. My Lord, Jesus. Praise God. Uh, I want the ushers to get ready, if they would, please. We're going to go back to prayer. And does, uh, remember our sick and our afflicted. We've got some traveling. Sister Janice is out of town. And uh, remember Judy Henson. Always remember Raina and Shay. She's bringing me. What is it? Woo! Raina has been found and safe. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 We give you glory in this house. We give you glory in this house. Yes. Been a long haul. But I know Shay is happy this morning, and so is Raina. Praise God. We're going to let them pray over the offering and pray for it. If you have a need, lift your hands all over the house. Yes. There's some urgent requests, and God knows what they are and who they are and who has needs this morning. And we're going to pray for all of those. Would you stand one more time all over the house of God? Brother Richard, you lead us in prayer and pray for every need in the house. Yes. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you this morning for the miracle that's taken place. We thank you, God, that Shay, Shay's daughter has been found. We thank you, God, that she's all right. We give you the honor. We give you the glory in this house. Lord, touch those this morning who have a need in their life. There's some God that, that cancer is there and needs to be taken away by the power of Calvary. God, there are some that have pain in their body. He said, not able to come to church this morning. God bless your name and thank you that every need has already been met through Calvary. We glorify you. We honor you in this house this morning. Bless the offerings, God, those who have it to give and those who don't equally as well in Jesus' name. Let's worship. God changed so much to thank you for. Yes.
Sister Becky, get ready. The yellow, yellow. Pray for her as she comes. Bless you, Sister Becky. Praise you. Good morning. You know, no matter what we go through, it's always nice that to know that God is right there with us. And everything that we've been through, everything we've done, he knows all about it. <laughs> and he loves us anyway. He created us. And it's nice to have that confidence to know that he knows my name. the stars one and all he knows how much sand is on the shores he sees every sparrow that falls he made the mountains and the seas he's in control of everything of all creatures great and small and he knows my name every step that Every move that I make, every tear that I cry, He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain and can't see the light of day. I know I'll be just fine, cause He knows my name. tomorrow may bring I can't tell you what's in store I don't know a lot of things I don't have all the answers to the questions of life but I know in whom I have believed and he knows my name every step that I take Every move that I make, every tear that I cry, He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain. I can't see the light of day, but I know I'll be just fine, cause He knows my name. He carried my cross He knew that I would fail Him But He took the loss He knows my name Every step that I take Every move that I make Every tear that I cry I 
can't see the light of day But I know I'll be just fine Cause he knows my name Every step that I take Every tear that I Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. Thank you, Sister Becky. Does he know your name? I was up at 4.30. I'd been awake a couple hours in the bed, and I was up at 4.30 this morning. I said, I'm finally just going to get up, and I'm just going to pray. I'm just going to seek the face of God. And the first thing I said after I said, good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Father God. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I said, it's me again. I said, you know what I said? I said, you know my name, Lord. I'm engraved on the palms of your hand. Thank God he knows our name. Nothing surprises him. Nothing surprises our God. He is able to do anything and everything. And remember, when it looks the darkest, he's going to work it out to your good. You hear me? It's going to work out to your good, no matter how dark it looks. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for the word? We're going to be reading out the book of Revelation this morning, verses 9 through 18. And I want to talk about John's vision of the risen Lord this morning. If you're able, would you stand? And I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Under Ephesus, and under Smyrna, and under Pergamos, and under Thyatira, and under Sardius, and under Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed in a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and death. Praise God. You might be seated. I told you I want to minister this morning by the help of the Holy Spirit on John's, the vision of the risen Lord, what he saw. 
we know from the word of God that he was called John the Beloved. He was a that he was one of God's disciples, Jesus' disciples. He was the one that it was thought laid his breast upon Jesus there at the Lord's Supper. He was uh, so beloved by Jesus that it was into John's hand that he gave his mother at the cross to take care of his mother. But he was banished, we know, to the Isle of Patmos. I studied this a little bit, and it was a rocky cliff-like area. It was a, a, a wilderness type of area. There was nothing there. there. At that time, there was very little vegetation. There was very little trees there. They, The very worst prisoners were sent to this place, and they couldn't kill him any other way. History records they tried to boil John in oil. He didn't do nothing but swim in it. He come right out of it. And so they said, we're going to get rid of him. We'll banish him to this isle. And the prisoners there were made to work and they would mine some type of marble rock that was on that island. But it was a horrible, desolate place to have to be in. But the thing that got me, it said he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. He was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. We know that in our Christian religion we choose Sunday as our day of worship, so on and so forth. There are those who choose Saturday. But the truth of the matter is every day is the Lord's day. If you can't worship him on Tuesday and you can't worship him on Thursday or Saturday or all the days of the week, then don't try to worship him on Sunday because he is the God of every day and it is our privilege to honor and to worship him every day of the week. But he was not only in the Spirit, the Spirit was in him. He was full of that Holy Spirit that Richard taught on this morning. There is too much flesh among God's people, among the church world as a whole. But I don't know about you, but I want to be in the Spirit. I need to be in the Spirit, and I need for God's Spirit to be in me. Somebody say amen. The Bible said if you walk in the Spirit, you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's not how high I jump. It's not how loud I shout. It's how, how do I live it? Do I live it? Is my life a witness? Is it a living testimony of Jesus Christ? Do I feel compassion for those that are needy and hurting? Do I feed the hungry? If I know somebody has a need in their life, if they get sick, do I go see about them and pray for them to see what I can do to take care of their needs? Do I witness to the lost? That's what it really means to be filled with the Spirit. You see, it's not what I say, it is what I do that matters. That determines how spiritual that I am, Brother Mohica. Don't tell me that you love me. And you can't help me. And you've got the means to do it. There's too many super saints flapping wings and going nowhere. But if you really got the goods, you're going to be obeying the word of the Almighty God and doing what he says. He said it was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And John said, I heard behind me a voice as a trumpet. This was the same voice, children of God, that spoke this world into existence. He stepped out on nothing. He spoke to nothing. And he created everything. He said, let there be light. And there was light. And that light is still uh, a light today. He spoke on Mount Sinai. And the mountains quaked. And there was thunder. And there was lightning. It's the same God that told John, come up hither. I'm going to show you some things to come. Some things he said that were not even lawful that he could utter them. He said, just write them down. And this is a great voice as a trumpet was the voice of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. When John saw him, 
And John heard him on the Isle of Patmos. He did not look, Brother Richard, like he looked when he was hanging on that cross. No, no, no. Oh, he had defeated death. He had defeated the cross. He had already won our salvation for us. This was not a voice that was weak and he could barely speak. No, this was as a great trumpet that sounded it was not weak as I said it had power it commanded authority it got your attention it was the voice that sounded as a trumpet and that's what you and I need to do we are to be the witnesses brother Richard spoke about in Sunday school we are the trumpeteers we trumpet the word of God. We are to sound this trumpet. This is the trump of God. This is what we are to sound. The word of God. And God told the prophet one time, he said, cry loud. It don't matter. It's okay. Spare now. He said, spare not. He said, show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. He also said in Joel 2 and 1, blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is nigh at hand. We are to be the trumpeteers in the day we're living in. I'll get to John in just a few minutes but I want to take a little trail, a little rabbit trail here and I want to do something else. I want to talk about that trumpet. What it means in the day we're living in. You see in the book of Numbers chapter 10 beginning at verse 1 God told Moses I want you to fashion two trumpets. He said I want two of them. And I believe one represented the Old Testament and one represents the New Testament. We talked about that in Sunday school. People say you don't have to have the Old Testament. We're living in the New Testament. That one back there is not relevant, but I beg your pardon. It absolutely is. Without that Old Testament, there would be no New Testament. But he's told him when he said, I want you to make them. And he said, I want you to fashion them out of one piece of silver. Each one of them. I want you to mold a piece of silver. And then I want you to, I'm going to call it a hammer. I don't know what tools they actually had. I know they didn't have our modern tools. But I want you to take that piece of silver. And I want you to beat it and beat it until a trumpet fashions out of that thing. I don't want you to put it in there by pieces. I don't want any fractures in it. It, it was two. It was the Old Testament, New Testament. But you listen here, this gospel right here is the same gospel. It is not fragmented. It is not for me to take it and give it one way and somebody else give it out another way. There's only one way that it can be blown, children of God. Jesus said, I don't did not come to, to change anything or do away with anything. He said, I come to fulfill my word. God gave instructions to Moses to fashion them. And he said, only my priests are allowed to blow them. There's a lot of people in the day we're living in. And they're trying to blow the trumpet. And they're not even born again. I thank God this morning that you are here. And you have been born again. Jesus himself said his father had made us to be kings and priests unto God. We have the right to blow it. Do you hear me? But there's a lot of people that's adding to it and taking away from it. And God forbid them to do that. You must be a priest. If you don't, and you're going to give out an uncertain sound and that uncertain sound could cause somebody to die and go to hell we got to be a priest to blow it the right way and I'm going to tell you something else if you blow this trumpet whatever that message is you better blow it in love you better blow this word in love uh, you, you're not going to win anybody by judging them 
You're not going to win them by calling out their faults and all of their failures. You pray for them. You, you don't condemn them, but you tell them about the love of a Jesus Christ who one day died upon the cross of Calvary, who paid the debt for our sins, and that he will forgive us if we will come to him. He will forgive us of our sins if we will ask him to do that. He paid our sin debt. We've got to love. First John 3 and 18 said, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue. But he said, you do it in deed and you do it in truth. In other words, don't tell me you love me and you can't help me when I'm in need. If you can't tell me the truth, uh, hallelujah, there's too much of this my for and no more. Honey, we are to help one another. If I have two coats and you need one, I'm to take one of those coats off of my back and give it to you. That's the way the Word of God works. Too much greed going on. Too much greed. But when this trumpet was blown in Israel, they were journeying through the wilderness journey and something took place when they would hear that trumpet blow. It blowed certain shorts and longs and all of that kind of thing and it was signals. And they understood what each one of those blows meant. And act Activity would take place because when they heard the trumpet they paid attention they went into action and God commanded them to blow it for several different occasions I won't be long on this but I want to mention to you what they were blown for God says I want you to blow the trumpet and I want you to do, do it to warn them of approaching danger. Are we warning our lost loved ones? We tell them about heaven. God said to do that. But are we telling them about that awful place that they need to stay away from called hell that was not created for mankind but for the devil and his angels? Are we telling them that it's the region of the damned and if you go there, you'll not be able to get out of that place. Tell them how hard hell is, but tell them Jesus again made the way for them to stay out of that place. Honey, this world is winding up. We're living in the last days. Any moment the winds of Armageddon are blowing upon the horizon and Jesus Christ is going to step into the clouds and he go, we're going to rise. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is going to quicken our mortal bodies and we're going to meet him in the air and we're going home to be with God. But if you're listening to me and you're unsaved and you reject Jesus Christ, I'm telling you this morning, hell is a place you do not want to go to. But it was blown. The Bible said to warn of approaching danger. And not only that, he said it was blown for the calling of the assembly. When God wanted to speak afresh unto his people, he would blow that trumpet. Exodus 19:13. When the trump soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And in verse 19, Moses spoke and God answered by a voice. When we need fresh revelation from God, we can get it out of the word of God. That's what I'm doing this morning. I'm giving you fresh revelation. I'm sounding the trumpet. Do you hear me? My Lord, as we've assembled here together, but you won't get it sitting at your TV at home. You won't get it not coming to church. You can't come to church once every three or four months and expect to be where you need to be with God. You got to feed this spirit man on the inside. Every, every time I go back to the grocery store, I just shake my head. You go in there and, and a loaf of bread or whatever you might have paid $3 for last week, this week it's 4 I went to one of our local stores that I will not name here in Elgin. Y'all can guess. It's one or two, okay? But I went to that store and I needed a, a jar of mayonnaise. 
certain brand that I like to buy, and it's right around three ninety four dollars. I go in there and I look on the shelf. Do you know what that same jar of mayonnaise cost? A, a, a couple do, a couple pennies short of seven dollars. I said, "Fooey, I'll go home and eat mustard." I'm not about to pay that kind of money. It's too hard to come by to buy seven dollars. You might as well say for a jar of mayonnaise. No, sorry, not me. I don't know where I'm at in this thing. It don't matter anyway. But I, I cannot walk each and every day and give out the bread of life without getting refilled. Just like every week I go to the grocery store and it costs more and more and more to buy those groceries. It's the same way with your spirit man. Why, Sister Luke, it takes more and more of getting in there and praying and fasting and seeking God because the enemy knows he only has a short time to work and he's raging. He's throwing everything in his power to destroy the people of God. But I got news to him. I have done read the back of the book. I know who the winner is. I have victory through Christ Jesus. Woo, give him a hand clap. But if I'm going to get up here and preach, I've got to have fresh oil. We talked about that last week when we preached. I've got to have it every day of my life. I've got to have that fresh anointing. I can't feed the sheep without it. Uh, and I'm going to tell you right now, God will not anoint uh, anything that is not of him. God will not put his anointing upon a church that is in the world and doing worldly things. You got to preach this word. You got to preach it straight and you got to preach it pure and clean. And your life has to be pure and clean in order for God to anoint you. His presence will not come into an unclean vessel. And then he said, I want you to sound that trumpet in your day of gladness. Praise and worship is a valuable tool in spiritual warfare. He inhabits, he indwells the praises of his people. You've got to have it. He said, tarry ye in Jerusalem till you be endued with power, with dunamis power from on high. You cannot even evangelize without power. And you can't get the power till you praise him. Because he inhabits the praises of his people. And it's in his presence that the power comes. I've seen the times, many a times, right here in this church when we'd be singing and the anointing would be flowing or somebody be preaching or somebody worshiping and you look up and there's a cloud that comes into this place. The Shekinah glory of God moves in. And when he does, it's a tangible thing that you can see and you can feel. And there's nothing like that, church. If we would come prepared like we're supposed to come prepared to our services and we're prayed up and seeking the face of God, honey, you would feel his presence when you hit the sidewalks out there. Hallelujah to God. Hosea 10 and 11 said, Judah, that's praise shall plow. It opens up my spirit to be able to receive the word of God. It breaks up my fallowed ground if I've got any in my life. So the seed of the word can be sown in there. We need to open our mouths. and We need to trumpet the word of God in praise and in adoration. It was blown also as a call to war. Church, we're in a battle for our very lives. You hear me? This is not a game that we are playing. 
This is a real war. A real war. And we better know how to sound that trumpet. It's a, within it is a sharp two-edged sword. Hallelujah to God. And that's what your weapon has to be. Because the word works. Down through the ages, men and women have been able to stand upon the word. Ever jot, ever tittle in this word is going to be fulfilled. This word is a tried and tested word. It'll do when you're living and it'll do when you are dying. And when the devil makes war on you, you stand up toe to toe and you say, listen here, devil, it is written. It is written. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Let me get back to John. John said, <laughs> said I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last he's the beginning and the end listen children of God he is the great I am Moses said who am I going to tell him sent me what did I tell him he said you tell him I am that I am has sent you he was there before I was born he's there now he's going to be there in my future he's always been there and always will be there anything that happens in my life never surprises him he knows all about it and I, as I said in the beginning it's going to work out to my good hallelujah he's an awesome God he's an awesome God do you hear me? His glory fills the heavens. His glory fills the heavens. This world and its political system is rotten to the core. It doesn't matter if it's Democrat or if it's Republican. You hear me? It's one snake with two heads. Because as long as they're going against what this word right here says, they're rotten. I don't care. We cry out, I thank God. God's got some good people in this world. He's still got them in every country and every nation. God has got his people. But I've got to say this, America is turning their back on God. And they better turn it around and turn it around fast. How can we cry out to God and say, God, would you save our nation? Would you help us when we're murdering our children in the mother's wounds? How can we do that when they don't care about the poor man and what takes place? It's the dollar bill is all they care. Oh, I got to get off of that. But I'm telling you, this world is rotten. To the core. Thank God. Our God has still got some godly people seeking His face. People who love Him. People who care about Him. Every one of us is not dead. There's some of us still alive. Do you hear me? He's still healing. He's saving. He's delivering. He's setting free. He's working miracles. God is still on the throne, children. Give Him a praise. John turned, and when he did, he turned, and what he saw was seven golden candlesticks. And we know from the Word of God that it represented the seven churches that are supposed to be the light of the world, a, a light to a dying world. Let's put it like that. He is the light of the world. And if he dwells in you and I, then you and I ought to be a light. Do you know why? That the light has gone dim? I've studied the candlestick. It's called the menorah. It actually, there was seven total branches. It too was to be fashioned out of one solid piece of gold. And when they hammered that, there was a middle, right there, candle. And out of that middle, three on this side came out, and three branches on that side came out. 
Six on it on the sides, three and three. Six is a number of man. But they're attached as one to that center branch which made seven, which makes us complete in Christ Jesus. He is the light that we get ours from. But I can have the candlesticks on the top of those branches. There were bowls. Seven bowls total. And inside of those bowls, there were wicks. You can have the wick, you can have the branches, you can have the bowls. But unless they're filled with the oil, there will be no burning. Too many of us have run out of oil. Too many of us need to go and find the oil vat which is this right here, once again. And we need to take another dip in there until we get filled with the oil. Hallelujah to God. Psalms 92 and 10, my horn, that's my strength. He said, shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. And then he gives us a process how it's to be done. He said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My Lord, church, we need that fresh oil. I can't make it without it. We talked about that last week or week before. Just because you speak in tongues doesn't mean you're totally full of the oil. God will give you an utterance if you one third full. You one quarter full. Half full, but it won't have the power to it unless you're all the way full. You remember the ingredients of the anointing oil? People think because I speak in tongues and they go out the door and live like the devil. You know, they think I'm full of the Spirit of God. No, sir. If you're not full of that word over there, you're not full of, of God. You're, because the Bible said, Jesus said, my word, it is spirit and it is life. And if you're not full of the word, you're not full of the spirit. You got to be full of the Spirit to be full. That's another message. Let me get out of that. But he looks and he sees the candlestick. And it was Jesus standing in the middle of those candlesticks. How was he dressed, Sister Luke? I read it to you. He had on a long robe, it was the robe of the great high priest. And it went all the way down to his feet. And the Bible said he was girded about the paps, the area, the breast area, with a golden girdle. Listen, he is the great high priest. He is our priest. He's our Lord. He's our Savior. And the Bible said he had head and hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. Do you know why? Because he is the Ancient of Days. Whoa, I talked about it a while ago. He is all knowing. He knows every hair on our head. Every time I comb my hair and I look at that comb, I got a little bit less hair. But you know what? He subtracts every one of them out of there. He still knows how many of them's in there. Glory to God. <laughs> he is the one who took a gob of dirt. And he fashioned man. And man was laying there. And he goes over and he breathes his own breath. The breath of the Ruach. The breath of Almighty God. And he breathed it into that piece of clay that was fashioned into a man. And man became a living soul. That's the God that created us this morning. He can heal our bodies. He made them. He said our bodies are marvelously made. Do you hear me this morning? Brother Mohega testified what he did for him in the area of his neck. God can do anything. Said his eyes were as a flame of fire. Jesus has an all-seeing eye. Jesus, you can't hide from him. You might hide from me, but Brother Wayne, you can't hide from God. You, you know, Ananias and Sapphira, they tried to do that. 
They sold a piece of land. They said, we're going to give this to, to God. We're going to let them divide it up for what's needed for the Lord. But then they whispered together and they say, nobody's going to know exactly how much we got out of it. Let's don't tell them how much we got. Let's keep some of that back. You know there's people, ooh, hallelujah to God. There's people today keeping back God's money. Ooh, hallelujah. I don't know why I said that, but God said to say it. Oh, glory be to God. You know what it ended up happening? They died. They carried them out one after the other and they buried them. I don't want to be buried because I get, hold back God's money. No sorry, anything from God. But he has an all-seeing eye. Those eyes, I can see him. When Peter had denied Jesus and he had told Peter, Peter, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. And before the cock crows three times, I put it in my old West Virginia English, after crows three times, said, you're going to deny me, Peter. And I can see when that cock crowed that third time, and Jesus, he had to be close to Peter because he looked over at Peter. And I can see him, and I don't believe he looked with eyes of judgment I don't believe he had condemnation when he was looking at Peter. Brother Mohegan, I believe he had such a compassion that it showed through those eyes. And Peter saw the love that Jesus still had for him. And he wept and he cried. That's why Jesus, when he, he, he arose, he said, go tell my disciples and Peter. Let Peter know he's forgiven. Let him know I love him. Oh, I got to go on. But said his feet. He said they were like unto fine brass as if they had burned in a furnace. Why? Because in the word of God, brass represents judgment. When Samson was bound up, he was bound up with fetters of brass. When you go to the uh, sanctuary, the tabernacle, Everything in the courtyard that represented sacrifice for sin and judgment was made out of brass. You go into the Holy of Holies and, and the holy place and it's made out of gold. But out there it was brass because it represented the judgment on sin. You understand? That's where it was taken care of. Jesus came back and John looked at him and said he saw his feet and he said they looked like burnished brass as though they had been burnt in a furnace. Why? Because he had already been to the cross of Calvary. He had judged sin. He he had put the devil under his feet. He had bruised the head of the serpent. And now he was saying, he had told his disciples, I give you the power to tread on the scorpions and the serpents on all power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's why his feet were brass. And when you walk around and the devil's after you, you need to stick your foot up and say, Hey, devil, do you see the bottom of my shoe? It's on your head. And said his voice was a sound as of many waters. That voice, it sounded, I long to hear that voice. I've heard it, literally heard it audibly a few times in my life. There's nothing like the voice of God. There's no, You can't describe it, but you never, ever forget it once you have heard it. It's on the inside of you. Listen, he had in his right hand seven stars. And he said they represented the seven messengers, the angels, the messengers, which actually come down to the pastors of the church and literally to all of us. Because he was holding them up in his hand. Listen, church, we don't hold God up. Do you hear me? He holds me and you. He doesn't need us. He gives us the privilege of serving him. Oh, glory be to God. And said, out of his mouth went a sharp, two-edged sword. His word is forever settled in heaven. 
And what we need to do is speak the word. Command the demon forces to back off. You turn loose of my children. You turn loose of my finances. You turn loose of my lost loved ones. Devil, you turn loose because of the blood of Calvary. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me try to finish up. Judy, you can get on. Try come on up here. And it says his countenance was as a sun that shines in his strength. That's the Shekinah. That's the glory. Moses one time said, God, show me your glory. He put him in a cleft of the rock. And he put his hand over him to cover him as he went by. And all Moses was allowed to see was a hinder part. But church, is coming a day when we're going to be in that city made for square. And we're going to see the glory of God in its full strength. Oh, my Lord. We're going to see him in all of his beauty. But do you know what we're going to do? We're going to fall down prostrate at his feet. We're going to take what crowns he may have given us and we know we're not worthy of them and we're going to throw them at his feet because he's the one that paid the price we didn't do it he did it church would you stand all over the house and finally John says when I saw him I fell at his feet as dead said he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not I am the first and the last and I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore and I have the keys of hell and death I tell you church they crucified him they put him in a tomb but on that third day he arose. He kicked the bottom out of that tomb and he come forth. I tell you church, death could not hold him and death is not going to hold you and I because of what he did for us. We need to praise him this morning. We need to glorify him this morning for he's worthy of all the praise and the honor. Get us a praise song, Judy. Let's worship him. If you're unsaved, this altar's open. Sing it with them. Come up front if you need to.